if you're brave enough to still be in the dating pool, I commend you. It is rough out there, and I admire you for not giving up on the hope of finding love. So I'm here very happily to help you find it. Hello everyone, my name is Tia and I'm a licensed psychotherapist. I make videos that offer tips on how to improve the relationship with yourself and with other people. So make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you never miss more tips from a therapist. Today, I'm sharing with you some of the best questions that you can ask on a date. I speak a lot about compatibility, character, and emotional maturity, so this video is meant to give you some guidance on how to assess for these things as you're on the lookout for someone to be in a committed relationship with. It could take some time for red flags and signs of incompatibility to present themselves, and we may not notice them until a real-life situation brings them to the surface. Today, I'm sharing four questions that you can ask on a date in order to dig beyond the superficial get-to-know-you topics and instead go for the things that really matter. Questions that make sure that you don't waste your time in the wrong relationship or put your heart at any unnecessary risk. These questions are designed to give you a lot of information without a whole lot of effort or without looking too obvious. Now, these are questions that both of you need to be able to have clear and honest answers to. So take the time as we go through each one to reflect on what your answers are gonna be. So when the date comes, you're prepared to answer them as well. Also, I encourage you to stick around until the end of the video where I'm gonna share a really helpful resource and give you a bonus fifth question to ask. Question number one, who's your closest friend and what are they like? Listen very closely to how they answer this question. First, are they able to name a closest friend at all? If they don't have a closest friend, that's a big problem. It means that nobody really knows them or has their eye on them. Now, if they can't name someone, you should ask them why they don't have a close friend and see what they say. Usually what it comes down to is they don't trust people, they don't know how to create and maintain relationships across time, or they're not living their life authentically enough where they have found their people. Now that's not the response that you're gonna get from them, but I want you to keep that in mind as you listen to their answer, because there's some significant consequences to starting a relationship with someone that doesn't have a closest friend, mainly that there's gonna be a lot of pressure on you to be their person for everything. Secondly, if they do have a close friend, how do they describe them? If they don't know very much about their closest friend, that's a big problem. They should know a lot about the person that they identify as closest to them. If they don't have much to say, that tells you the shallowness of their relationships. Now, friendship is a foundational aspect to any healthy romantic relationship. And if they don't know how to be a good friend, they won't know how to be a good boyfriend or girlfriend to you. You should also ask them how often they connect with their closest friend and what they do together. There's a ton of data that you can pull from this answer. Does their answer seem to reflect that they're consistently willing to invest time and effort in their relationships? Does this friend seem like a positive or a negative influence on them? Does it sound like a healthy relationship or does it sound kind of one dimensional? Our closest friend is the one that we call at our highest and our lowest moments, meaning that they have a significant influence over our lives. It's important that you know who that person is in your life and for the people that you date and whether or not they're a good choice for that esteemed role. It tells you whether or not they have good judgment of who to keep close to their heart. Question number two is how do you spend your free time? Now there are not a lot of hours in the day, so it's important to know what they decide to prioritize. If they don't have much free time, that likely means they won't have much time to invest in a relationship. So you need to consider whether or not you're okay with that. If they don't have an answer for what they do in their free time or they're vague about it, it most likely means that they're embarrassed of how they spend their time and they don't really wanna say it out loud. But if they do give you an answer, do they list things that you admire, find interesting, or add to their attractiveness? Find out what podcasts they listen to, what shows they like to watch, and what books they like to read. Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. So these choices of media outline the type of person that they're becoming. 
and think about whether that media of choice has a positive or negative messaging. Now, we all need just entertainment and opportunities to unwind and chill. However, if they seem like they're addicted to screens or mindless entertainment, it tells you that their focus and their energy is not consciously chosen. It means that their attention and time are at the mercy of chasing dopamine. Now, in relationships, that translates to them having a low tolerance for stress and a low level of passion in their life. Question number three is how will you know that you've lived a good life? Now, this is a deep question that's gonna tell you a lot about a person. Their answer is gonna show you where they get their significance and what they value most in life. Now, if they don't have an answer, it means they are lost with no sense of direction or purpose in their life. But if they do have an answer, consider whether or not that aligns with your answer. Is their answer detailed or is it kind of vague? Do you like the description of what they envision? And are they currently living in alignment with that vision? Or are they describing something that sounds good but has nothing to do with who they are right now? Furthermore, is their concept of a good life based on something solid like religion and family values? Or is it based on selfish pursuits? And when they describe how they envision a good life, does it include other people or just themselves? Having a shared vision of the future is like a map that both of you are gonna follow if you decide to share life together. Make sure that your destinations match. The fourth question is, what do you struggle most with in relationships? This question requires humility, self-awareness, empathy, and accountability in order to answer it, all of which are signs of emotional maturity. And if you'd like to learn more about the other signs of emotional maturity, check out my previous video, Eight Signs of Emotional Maturity. Look, none of us are perfect, and the goal isn't to just wait until we find the perfect person because that's never gonna happen. However, it does matter that we know where our weak points are. You should expect to hear and give a very clear and specific answer. Some examples include that they have a tendency to be selfish and need to keep themselves in check. Maybe they martyr themselves and get resentful when it's not reciprocated. Maybe they struggle to communicate how they feel and what they need. Perhaps they shut down and avoid conflict or struggle with anger and defensiveness. And some people make up assumptions in their mind instead of directly talking to the other person, while others struggle with boundaries. The list could go on and on. But then there needs to be two follow-up questions. How are you currently working towards bettering yourself in that realm? And can you share some specific examples? It's easy to say, I'm working on it. It's easy to say, oh yeah, I'm going to therapy. Make them give you specific examples. Now, my goal in this video and on my channel in general is to help you date smarter, not harder. I love to give tips. I love to give people helpful advice, but it's another thing to feel confident using it. So I've made a free PDF with a bonus fifth question, as well as these other four, where you're able to take it with you on your next date. Now you don't have to print it out, so it'll be weird. Just have a screenshot of it on your phone and you can kind of peek at it and make sure that you're covering all your bases. Check out the description box where you'll find a link where you can sign up with your email to get this must have list. Did you find this video helpful? What other questions do you like to ask when you're on a date? Let us know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.